Recall from our previous lesson that we have set out to create a two-dimensional array using only pointers. And our array is going to consist of four words, each having a maximum of six total bytes in length. The first step in our task is to allocate the storage that we need, in this case 24 bytes. Even though it violates the spirit of the lesson, we are temporarily using this method in order to allocate our 24 bytes, as was explained in the last lesson. Now we're ready for the next part. Once we have allocated the memory we'll need, the next step is to actually start putting in the data. Now here are the words that we're going to be using. So let's start with the first word, which is simply the word one. Now before we examine how to put the word one into our string of text, let's decide where to put it. Where inside of these 24 bytes should the word one, which is our first word, where should it go? And the natural answer and the correct answer is it should begin with the very first byte. It should be at the very start of the array. So let's go ahead and put in the word one, including the null termination character. Here's how we do that. First of all, let's create the pointer. Now before I create the pointer, let's go ahead and convert this into a proper program. And we'll just move all this in here. And we'll turn this into a comment, which I do by using these characters to begin the comment and these characters to end the comment. And now we can go ahead and proceed. So let's create a pointer called PTR and set it equal to the memory address of the very first character in storage, which you see here. The ampersand means the address of and the address of this, which is specifically this, the first character in storage. So our pointer now contains the memory address of the first byte, which is where we want to put the O for the word one. So let's store the word one like this. What is at the memory address offset zero is going to be equal to capital O. What is at the memory address plus one is equal to the letter N and E. And now we need our null termination character at the end of that. And there you go. Now it's worth pointing out that I could have just written PTR here since plus zero doesn't do anything, but I'm putting the plus zero just to make this a little easier to read and understand. So what we're saying here is find the memory address of PTR, which is already pointing to the, the address of the first element in storage. And then we're going to set that to O, find the next byte and set that to N, followed by E, and follow by a null termination character, and so on. So that's how we proceed. We've already set the first word. Now keep in mind that throughout this lesson, PTR is always going to contain the memory address of the start of the 24 bytes. We're not moving PTR. It always is going to stay in the same place, but we're using an offset along with PTR in order to locate a specific address small typo there. Now notice the similarity between this code and exactly how we would do the same thing using arrays. We would do something like this. And in fact this would give us the exact same result. This code and this code are identical. So now we're done with the first word. Let's go ahead and put in the second word. First of all, where does it go? Where would we start our second word? If we imagine that this is O, N, E, followed by the null termination character, you might imagine that we want to start the next word here. But the problem is if we do that, then we don't maintain the rectangular structure of the array, like you've seen in previous lessons. Every element of the array needs to be the same length which we've determined is going to be six characters. That means that the second word 
must start at byte number six. In other words, you're going to have something that looks like this. Our first six bytes, bytes zero through five, need to, in the end, contain the word one. The next six bytes need to contain the word two, and so on. So, in this case, we're maintaining a rectangular structure. Every element of our array is exactly the same number of bytes in size. In some cases, such as in the case of the word one, where we don't use all of those bytes, then we don't know for sure what's going to happen at the end of that process, but we don't need to. As long as we set these characters correctly, then it doesn't, then it doesn't matter what these are set to because our printf statement is going to look here, it's going to print to the null termination, and then it's going to quit. So we, whatever these two bytes are set to is going to be irrelevant. It's wasted space, but we don't need to worry about that. Now keep in mind that because we're starting at 0 and we're stopping at 23, that's a total of 24 bytes. And even if a given word doesn't fill up the six bytes that are allocated to it, those six bytes are still reserved just for that one word. So notice that the second word, word two, will begin at byte number six. Now before we put it in, I should make a comment. Keep in mind that we have started out with all 24 of these bytes initialized to a character that we know. We've already set all 24 bytes with this line of code. When we are done, we will look at how the final string will look. Now that we know the second word will start at byte number six, let's go ahead and put it in. So we're going to start with six T now. W O null termination character, and then we'll just adjust this. And there you go. So now we have the first word and the second word. And you should see then that the next word, the third word, is going to start at byte 12. So let's go ahead and put that in. So we're going to go 9, then 10, 11, oops, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Notice we don't start at 10 because every word has six bytes allocated to it, so technically the word two, even though we've only used four of those bytes, it actually has a total of six bytes allocated to it, so we go ahead and start the word three at byte 12, like so. And we're going to need a few extra characters. There you go. And 15, 16, and 17. Notice that the third word begins at byte 12, which is the same thing as six times two. The second word starts at byte six, which is the same thing as six times one. And the first word begins at byte zero, which is the same thing as six times zero. Where in this case, six is the size we've chosen for each array element. Just as we've talked about in earlier lessons, you can find the start of any element in an array by multiplying that element number in this case, two times the size of the element. So it should be obvious to you that the next word, the word four, is going to start at byte position six times three, which is 18. And it is also the only word that starts immediately after the previous word, because three occupies all six bytes. So here we're going to have our final word, which is four. And there you go. Now that we've allocated all of the words of the string, let's go ahead and take a look at what the string now looks like. Now, in order to keep this simple, I've replaced the null termination character with a dollar sign just so that it's easier to visualize. But if we were looking at memory at our original string of text storage, 
it would look like this with the exception being that the dollar sign is really a null termination character and the underscores refer to those characters we haven't touched so they will be set to whatever they were already set to and of course the dollar sign and the underscores are just part of this lesson not part of C remember that we started the word 3 at position 12 why because 3 is word number 2 when we're starting with 0 you go 0 1 and 2 so 3 is word 2 and 6 times 2 is 12 and of course this is 6 times 3 which is 18 so given whatever element we're talking about if it was element 10 you would say 6 times 10 and you would know you were starting at byte 60 and that's because we have determined that each of these elements is 6 bytes in size now what if you wanted to locate a specific character well for example the R in 3 you just simply need an offset that's going to be 6 times 2 here let's do it down here it's going to be 6 times 2 plus 2 because this is going to be plus 0 plus 1 and plus 2 alright so that's it for now we'll continue this concept in the next lesson